Hi everybody, it's Tiffany and Brian from the Forest of Chronicles. I hope you guys are doing well. We recently asked if you all had any questions for us in one of our recent videos and we received a lot of them. So we wanted to record a Q&A for you guys as promised. So yeah, we're going to just jump right in, I guess. Yep, you got anything yep. to say? Mm -hmm. jump in? Okay, Nothing I'm just much. going to this scroll is, through. Uh, by the way, this is not scripted, so we're going to try to keep it as real as possible right. with honest answers. So, well, <laughs> as honest as we want y'all to, you know, so, so now, but whatever. Yeah, Enjoy but it. we didn't like powwow before and go over the questions together and decide what we wanted to say. We didn't do any of that. So, um, let's see. First question from Nats Nats. When you and Brian have a disagreement and you can sense it may get ugly or already has, what do you do to get over it and move on? You want to go first? <laughs> Why are you laughing though? I don't know. Well, we, I, I personally haven't found out how to get over that yet. That's still a work in progress because sometimes it takes a, a while for me to unwind and depending on how big the argument is, not every time we have a disagreement or whatever, but if we have a, dis a strong disagreement, it takes me a while to unwind or whatever and, and be myself again. Um, but I just try to, I don't know, man. It's, it's tough, but it's just, it's a work in progress. I haven't, dis I haven't discovered that for me personally yet. Yeah, we're definitely not perfect. Um, we both can be a little stubborn. So when we get in disagreements and we're in a stubborn mood, sometimes it, um, goes a little further than it should but we never one thing i can say we never hit below the belt like we never disrespect each other we never call each other any names or anything like that um and one thing i also can say is the argument or style of argument changed after we got married so we've been married for a little over three years and it's a little different when you have a husband or a wife versus a boyfriend or girlfriend on how quickly you get over arguments mm -hmm. because we get over it a little quicker you know we're not going anywhere um, and no argument that we've had has been at the severity level of like a divorce like we've never had any big disagreements of that magnitude normally what happens is it's something so small and stupid and we just let it escalate mm -hmm. so it's never anything that's serious um, it can be something about a dish and a sink. It, it's just something so stupid, but yeah, yeah. we still figuring out how to how to get over it. Before, um, but we it, we don't really get in that many arguments that go crazy. You know, that get to a point where it's just crazy. That doesn't yeah. really happen. Uh, let's see. What's the next one? What do you and Brian do to keep your marriage healthy and fresh and fun? You two are always having a good time, either even after having Bryce. If this is your first time to our channel, Bryce is our son. Um, a lot of couples tend to forget that they have a spouse once they once the honeymoon phase is over. I love that about you too. Oh, thanks. So what? So the question is, what do you and Brian do to keep your marriage healthy and fresh and fun? So I guess I'll go first answering this question since Brian went first last time. Uh, we make sure that we still have date nights or date days. Um, sometimes it's a little difficult because we don't have anyone to babysit him that's closer than 45 minutes so we have to pretty much all of our babysitters are in maryland and dc so we have to just drive um to get to them but it's, it's okay i mean we can just go out there so we just mm -hmm. make sure that we just continue to date each other whether it be a movie dinner hanging out with friends um we hang out with a lot of um other couples as well so i think that also helps yeah, um, she's pretty much accurate on that. I don't really have much to add, but just try to go on date nights and things like that and go to try to go to events and things like that. So, I mean, a lot of people think they're not good parents because, okay, you went to you went to a couple of date nights for out of the month. So out of the month, let's see, there's an average 31, 30 days out of a month. Say you go on two date nights a month or three date nights a month. That's... <laughs> yeah. 20, 20, 20, that this, you still got your kid 29 days. Yeah. So, I mean, that's true. It's not that big of a deal. You know what I'm saying? It's always, oh, you have to always prioritize. Well, I wouldn't say always prioritize your marriage, but you have to prioritize your marriage too. Because if you don't have a happy marriage, nine times out of ten, you won't raise your kids properly, or they're going to see some type of 
they're going to pick up on something. So that's fine. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I completely agree. You know, you have to have a strong foundation and relationship together in order to be the best parents you can be. And, um, you know, your, ch your child's going to pick up on any dysfunction or any tension between the two of you. So it's definitely going to reflect. And he, you just brought up another thing we talked about the other day. So we were talking about um, how we go on a vacation every year. So prior to having Bryce, we always went on one, sometimes two vacations every year. And so when Bryce came into our life, we continued that tradition. We didn't change that just because Bryce was here. So instead of doing two together, we may try to do one as a family and then one with Jess, Brian, and I. So every year we have to do somewhere with Jess, Brian, and I. And like he said, out of 365 days out of a year, you going on a week vacation with your spouse for seven days is not being a bad parent. So, mm -hmm. yeah. As long as you leave them with somebody trustworthy and my mom and my sister are pretty trustworthy. So, <laughs> let's see. What's next? Do you plan on having more kids? And if so, would you move? What? I guess we'll be moving to another another. Place. Oh, would you move? Yeah. Oh, oh, oh. So first is, do you plan to have more kids? And then if so, would you move? Yeah. Um. We're, we're, well, that's still kind of up in the air right now. Um. I so I want to have another child, but um. I don't know if, if we didn't. Bryce is. Is pretty much good enough for us, but I mean, it's it's a, it's a long story behind that. You know, kids are kind of expensive, and when you factor in, you got to pay for college, mm -hmm. uh, daycare, daycare uh, just feeding them, clothing them, and things like that. It can add up, so it really depends on the finances, I guess. Because Tiffany, obviously, Tiffany's still in school, working on her PhD, so. Um, Couple when she's done with that, you know, Uncle Sam's gonna be coming in <laughs> or Fannie Mae or whatever. So, yeah, it's a lot of things that uh, yeah. put that fact. If you would like to, I would like to have one. I think Tiffany is pretty good with Bryce. Well, for for me, it's just, I, I it's a lot to consider. I love being a mother. It's one of the greatest gifts ever to to have Bryce in our life. Um, I. I, I do want to have another child, but I don't too. Like I, I can see both sides of the equation. Mm -hmm. um, the only reason that I would want another child is just for the simple fact of giving Bryce a sibling. Like Ooh. there, there's n my my sense of being a mom is completely fulfilled with Bryce, um, and and that's different for every person. So if I did give him, have another child, it would be just so we could have a sibling. Yeah, and that's, that, and that's part of my reason too. Because yeah. I do because I see how Bryce interacts with other kids and mm -hmm. things like that. And you know, I want I would like to have him play paint because hell, we about to we about to be old. So I was like, look, we're I not want, about to be old. Well, we, we, well, we're not about to be old, but you know, <laughs> Bryce will be like, oh, I want to go play basketball. Oh, I want to go blah blah blah. I want to go ride my bike. Yada yada yada. You know, what I'm saying? if he had another playmate, you know, the son, a, a, a son or a daughter, yeah, go 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 outside, go yeah. on or whatever. But that, I mean, like you like do have said, to be their friend. Yeah. Like you have to be their playmate. Yeah. So I mean. <laughs> That that's a factor too, but I, like we both grew up um, with older brothers and old, and or, you know with other siblings or whatever, so yeah. we kind of know that environment, and know how fun it is. So we kind of want to give that same thing to Bryce, but at the same time, cash. Yeah, buddy. I mean, and, and, <laughs> so. okay, and, and and let us just make it clear: like we are doing well financially. Like it's not like we're struggling. We just know what type of lifestyle we want to have and what type of lifestyle we want for our child. So um, yeah. I'm really big on traveling and seeing the world. Um, and I just I just love to see new places, learn about new cultures, taste new type of foods. And I just think there's so much world out there for someone not to travel. Of course, I mean, there's financial constraints that people have and stuff like that. I understand that. But for us, that's the type of lifestyle that we enjoy. And I really want to be able to um, take my child around the world too. That's something that I wasn't able to do when I was growing up. That's something that Ryan wasn't able to do and we just really want to do that together and with our child. So um, we just factor in stuff like that in and you know we're both working full time now like Ryan said I'm in school but I'm about to graduate and student loans are gonna start and so we're just it's just a lot mm -hmm. to consider. I want to be able to send my children to college um, with you know paying for their undergrad um, um, college and so they won't have to pay student loans back for undergrad like I like I have to stuff like that so it's just a lot to consider so yeah. the short answer after saying all that is we not sure yeah we not sure <laughs>
we'll get back to you. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, okay. So, do you think a couple should live together before marriage and did you? Whoa. Shacking. Yeah. Um, we, sh we shack. <laughs> <laughs> yes, we live together yeah. before marriage. Actually, pretty, if you're... Qu pretty quickly, actually. I think we would like we get together for like maybe nine months or something like that <coughs> when we shacked yeah. or whatever. And it's funny, though. He, see, it's funny, though, because... Never mind. Oh, okay. Well, no, I was going to say, like, the way that he brought it up, because I always believe that a guy should bring it up, but I'm just really Southern like that, so if you a girl and you brought it up, don't take any offense by that. That's just me being weird. But he was just like, he never came directly and said, hey, we should move in together. He was just kind of like, so I've been thinking, as we're, like, folding clothes or doing something random, I think I should... Well, I don't remember what he said, but it was just, it was not direct. It was very like a roundabout way, but and it ended up working out. So do you think couples should live together before marriage? Yeah, I, I think, I think so. Um, mainly because, you know, when you marry somebody, in my opinion, before you marry them, I, I, I would suggest that you know everything the most possible about them. And you really don't really know until you actually live with that individual to see how they are every day. Because um, it's, it, it's not, it's, I don't know, I, don't, I mean, it's, it's probably bad to, you know, marry somebody, live with them the first time, and then find out that they do the most trifling things that you can't deal with. So I suggest getting that out the way first, see if you could deal with it. If you can't move on, if you can, just keep on trucking. So mm -hmm. uh, I would say live together first. Uh, this is something that I struggle with. So... The way that I was raised, very Christian household, it was not the thing to do. You do not live together before marriage. Um, but as I grew older, you know, you just start learning more about life and you make decisions for yourself. And so um, it was just a conversation I had to have with my parents, you know, when, when we decided to move in together, that I respected their opinion, but this was something I wanted. And the reason that I, I say that I think it's beneficial for couples to live together before marriage, mama, don't, don't kill me. Um, is because similar to what Brian was saying, um, but I don't know, like you just, you, you, it's different when you wake up and go to bed beside the same person every single day. You learn a lot about each other, you learn a lot about them, and you get to figure out, like Brian said, whether or not it's the person for you. But um, I will say that if you do decide to live together before marriage, I strongly recommend that only one person's name be on the, um, the lease. Um, when me and Brian did it, I was already in a condo that I purchased and then he moved in. And then after we got married, we, um, we bought a place together. Um, and I say that just because if you end up moving in together, you find out this is not the right person and you need to part ways, you want to make it as seamless as possible. Like You don't want to have to live together for six more months because your lease isn't up until that particular month and now you're trying to, you know, you're, you're trying to move on but you got to see the person every day because your lease ain't up and you got to, you know, you, you know, like if you, if one person's on the lease um, and you can sign a contract between the two of you, you know, if you want to make, make yourself feel comfortable, like if you're not the person that's on the lease and you want to make sure that if y'all do break up, they give you like a month or two months to get it, find another place or something like that, then I understand that. but. It just makes makes it easier. And when one, if, if you're going to buy a TV, one person buy that TV, one person buy the couch, stuff like that. So if you got to part ways, you can part ways as seamless as possible. You can just take what you brought, in my opinion. I didn't discuss this with him first, but this is just... Is. No, but, but seriously, though. Like, calculated say, in a mug. I am very calculated. I, I am. Anyway, I, I put a lot of thoughts. I mean, I'm just saying, whatever. does that... Comment down below if what I'm saying makes sense. It like, makes sense, but <laughs> cold blood in. Okay, what if anyway, you break up and your lease don't don't um, I get six more saying. months, and now you're trying to date somebody and you can't even date over. I, I, I get what you're saying. You're like, no. supposed to be planning to break up. I mean, oh but gosh. whatever. Okay. Next question. Um, any advice for those that think they're ready for marriage? Do's and don'ts before getting married. Married and do's and don'ts while planning to get married. So, any advice for those? that think they're ready for marriage or any do's and don'ts? Uh, I think that you should, okay, I'll start. He, he's thinking. Yeah, I'm, 
<laughs> I was gonna let him go first, but he's thinking. So my advice would be to first pray about it. So if you think that you've met someone that's good for you, pray about it. Of course, hopefully at this point, if you think they're for you, you either have just or have um, a plan to introduce them to your family, your really close friends, because um, even though the final decision lies with you, um, I think it's just really important for those people that are really close to you, really know you, um, to meet the person and kind of just get a feel for them. Um, but definitely pray about it. Um, I think that you all should definitely talk about finances. That's one of the number one reasons for divorce. And um, I'm not saying that the first date or second date start talking about finances. I'm talking about after you all have been dating for a while and you want to consider a life with this person. You need to know each other's credit scores. You need to go through each other's credit reports. And this was a, a, a conversation me and Brian had to have that wasn't easy for us. Mm -hmm. um, Brian didn't understand why we need to have it at first. But one thing you don't want to happen is you didn't have those conversations. You get married. You're trying to make big financial um plans together such as buying a home or something like that you get to the table to buy the house and sign stuff and now you finding out stuff that's on your significant other's credit report that you ain't know nothing about that's just not the time you know so you just want to make sure that whatever find out all their finances and, and other stuff about them too but um so that you can just make an agreement to work those things together not saying that they have a bad credit report you leave them i mean that's up to you but you just need to go in knowing those things and knowing everything that, that lies ahead of you what advice you have? Just have conversations about the main things that you think is important to you or to how you want to carry your household or raise kids from raising your important. kids. Um, what religion, if y'all have different religions, what religion you want to be? Because, of course, when you raise a kid, that will come into play. Oh, I want my child to be this. Oh, I want my child to be that. Oh, let them find, you know, um, finances, as you said, number one thing. Um, but I think those are the main things you need to, just how you want your family, like what, if there are any roles you want to play, like, mm -hmm. okay, are you the main provider, is she provide, or she providing, are you doing X, Y, Z, is she doing X, Y, Z, or is it just a no, free fall? Yeah. So, mm -hmm. I mean, yeah, those main things, I would say, have a discussion, a real talk about it, and see if y'all on the same page or not, so. Definitely. Um, and it was do's and don'ts of planning a wedding, not do's and don'ts of planning to get married. So for do's and don'ts oh, of shit. planning a wedding, we planned our own wedding. Um, and we, my do's and don'ts for this is do, okay, don't have any outstanding debt for your wedding after you say I do. Um, a lot of people put stuff on their credit cards. A lot of people still owe things to vendors after they say I do. And so you're pretty much bringing debt into the beginning of your marriage. You don't want to start your marriage like that. Yep. I've even heard some cases of um, people that were married for like three or four years, yep. got divorced, and they're still paying on their wedding. Mm -hmm. yeah, that ain't hot. That is not hot. So what me and Brian did was we um, Street thought cash out, <laughs> we, we, we set a budget. Um, and we pay cash for everything or, you know, or debit card, you know, cash that we already had in our possession. And I, um, had a payment plan for each of our vendors. And by mm -hmm. the time we said I do, we were paid off. I mean, yep. honeymoon, everything. By the time we came back, no bills. So that's my biggest, um, thing of to do. And, and, and I mean, I have a lot of other advice cause I really enjoy planning the wedding. So if you have any other particular planning wedding questions let me know and I'll consider doing a video just for that because there's a lot mm -hmm. <laughs> of that but anything um do's and don'ts um as a guy <laughs> uh just go along with the ride next question how have you changed since having Bryce oh hmm. uh, I don't know, man. I, I guess I'm more responsible, I guess you want to say. And um, I guess certain things sort of affect me a little bit more. Like, I guess I'm, I, I would say reading things about things about the news when, you know, young black kids and things like that happening to them or young kids in, in general, when it happens to them, I always put myself in fact perspective, like what did that happen to Bryce mm -hmm. or whether it happened to me, I'll be out here without Bryce or Bryce wouldn't have a dad. So I kind of think about things like that. Um, but I don't know. It just makes me be a little bit more outgoing, you know, try to let him see different things and be exposed to different things and just pretty much be more responsible as a, as a parent. Um, for me, I don't know. I, it, I, I used to always be a lot about 
my career and I still am very focused on my career but it was harder for me to go back to work after maternity leave was over than I thought it was going to like I thought like I was very like ambitious career minded and I still am you know I'm juggling school and, and career but sometimes you just want to just like set all that aside and just be a mom like my first time having to travel for work after I had Bryce I cried like on the plane in the hotel I tried to get out of it it didn't work it was horrible so I don't know I just I, I'm just trying to learn how to juggle more pieces of me like being a mom is being added to being a student being a wife being an employee like so I don't know mm -hmm. what are your favorite TV shows oh and this is from Charlotte Lexus sorry the first couple questions are from Nats Nats what is your what is your what are your favorite TV shows Oh, How to Get man. Away with Murder. Oh my gosh. Y'all, that show has me like this at the end of every episode. Brian don't watch us. He don't even understand me right now. He don't understand me right now. Mm -mm. Um, That's probably my favorite show right now. We like um, Family Feud. No. Well, me, him, and Bryce yeah, like watching that yeah, together. We, like, we watch Family Feud. Um, sports, uh, NBA, NFL. Blackish is good. Black Blackish is a good show. We watch Empire. We fell into the Empire high. I wanna say it's our favorite show. Uh, we like reality T V, love and hip hop. Don't tell don't tell nobody though. Don't tell nobody. Uh, the real housewives of Atlanta, ratchetness. Oh, uh, but yeah, blackish. Blackish is up there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I watch Being Mar Being with Being Mary Jane. Yeah. Yeah, I we like watch that. that. Yeah, we both watch that. Comes on too damn late though. Good yeah, it does. It does. Uh, yeah, that's it. Not much. Um, how do the Target candles compare to Bath and Body Works? <laughs> that's her I guess that's directed at B. So yeah. <laughs> Brian has no opinion. Nope. I think they work really well. I mean, they last long. They burn long. The, I've ha bought Which one. The Target ones versus Bath Bath. So that one's from Target. Oh. It's a candle behind the camera. Oh. Um, so I bought that. We moved into the house, and that was almost two years ago. And I still have candle left and. I burn it often, so I think they're pretty good quality, and they're about half the price. I still think ten dollars is too much, but it's better than twenty-two dollars. Um, okay, the hair is for. Hi, has it gotten easier leaving Brian and Bryce for work travel? Um, I kind of hinted on that one with the other question too. No, it has not gotten. Okay, it's gotten a little bit easier in terms of I don't cry anymore. Um, but it, it doesn't get easier. I used to think that Bryce was going to be mad at me when I got back and upset. And he, you can tell when I just get back from a trip that he's really, he's a lot more attached to me, even though he's always attached to me, but mm -hmm. you can just tell the difference. Like he's more clingy. Um, but I think he's getting used to it. He knows when I say, I'm going to come back, I'm coming back. And I have a conversation with him before and I say, mom is going to be gone for two days. And I also try to keep it as short as possible, so I really will go in and out one in one day if I have to, or do two days or three days. It's never really that lengthy of a time, so no, it hasn't gotten easier, but I gotta get this pipe up. Um, the Harris Four also asked, "What made you decide to send Bryce to private school?" Oh well, I guess I'll take that question. Okay. Uh, well, basically, our daycare was charging the same exact price as the private school he goes to, so. Off the off the rip, that was a no brainer. You know what I'm saying? For him to go to a school to be around a, a legit learning, at, not saying he wasn't learning anything at daycare, but here he has an actual curriculum. Yeah, he has a curriculum. Yeah. We know what, we, what what he's doing. He gets paperwork. He he gets his work sent with him um, every day mm -hmm. from school. Um, you know, they have different activities, field trips, and things like that. So it was basically a no brainer for us once we found out the price was the same. So and and. To make this make sense to people that may not have watched our vlogs before, Bryce is two. So he's not old enough yet for regular school, regular public school. So it was either daycare or um, or this private school. Um, and we we talked about when he gets, you know, when he turns five, he's old enough. We're probably going to take him out and put him in the public school that's around us. Because the reason that we moved from Maryland to where we are now is because we want it to be in a great neighborhood that has great schools. Mm -hmm. So we moved to this area for this, you know, for good schools and for, for other reasons too, but for good schools. So the public schools around here are really good. However, if I take him out and I see that the transition is not working for him or he's regressing or something like that, I'm putting him right back in. I'm just about to have that payment. But 
right now the plan is just private school until he turns five and then the public school that's near us. Yeah, need my money back. <laughs> um, Light Bright also asked, do you have plans of expanding your family? So we already answered that one. Um, Caleb, what are your professions? Uh, well, I guess I'll go first. I am a contractor for the government. I um, can't really get into much detail of what I do, but I work for IT, basically. IT systems and things like that. So. Um, and I am a director of policy and research for education nonprofit. So that's what I do. Education, policy, and research. Um, what city do you live in? I will say that we live in Northern Virginia. <laughs> How old are you two? Um, I'm 31. And I am 15. It's like now. I'm 33. That was a joke. <laughs> How many more kids do you want to have? Oh, two max. No, like more, more one more. One more max. Yeah. yeah, one one more. <laughs> if one, we have one another, max. just one. Yeah, 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 one. What are your hobbies? Um, I love to read. I love to travel. Travel is like my main hobby. Um, but I like to read. I like to dance, even though I haven't danced in a while. Um, but travel. Yeah. Uh, I have, I've been wanting to pick up a hobby. Xbox. Uh, I don't even play the Xbox that much. Every, Do I? Every chance he get. Well, okay. <laughs> no, no. Tell the whole story. He didn't play the Xbox too much because he had the old Xbox 360. For Father's Day this past past Father's Day, I bought him the Xbox One. And he's been playing it a lot. Ah, what do you define by a lot? What what's a lot to you? I don't know. When the last just, time you saw look, me play? It's, just, it's your hobby. When the last time you saw me play? I don't know. Exactly. She don't know, but it's every day. I, did I say that? Okay. I said anyway, often. I anyway, said a lot. Anyway. I, did, I never said every day. You said a lot. Every day is a lot. I don't play. Is every that day. what it means? Yeah. A lot means every day. It means frequently. Look, look it up. It look means it up. I, like all the time. And if you haven't seen, but me, I didn't say every day though. Okay, I don't play that often. Okay, he doesn't play. Okay, I will say that he doesn't play it as often as he used to play video games when I first met him. That is true. Yeah, so. So the next question is from Lady T and family. And she asks, when is your one year anniversary for YouTube? So that's already passed. It was in August. Mm -hmm. We've been vlogging for a year in August. So um, we wish we were a little further. Than, I mean, we, we're, we made good progress. I mean, almost 700 subscribers in a year is good but we wish we had like double that at this point but we've come to find out it's really not about the subscribers you know we the reason we if you watched our welcome video the reason we initially started vlogging was because we wanted to have memories my mom um who doesn't live in the direct area around us loves to keep up with bryce um so it was just a way for her to be able to keep up with us and i want bryce to be able to look back at things that he did before um, the age that you start remembering things and see all the great things that he did. Mm. You know, the boy has been to Mexico. You know, he's been to um, so many different activities, the circus and stuff like that, playing with his cousins. And so I want him to be able to have some memorabilia from that. Um, you know, it's, it's, the video just shows so much more than just pictures. Um, and I don't know, just God forbid if anything happens to anyone, um, just having the footage there for him to be able to look back at, you know, how he, him and grandma, you know, played around or how him and grandpa did and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. uh, let's see. Next question is from Love Interest TV. And have, is, is, the question is, have you gotten comfortable with the camera yet? Uh, <laughs> I don't think I have. I mean, some people just have the ability to... Um, I guess turn it on or whatever. I guess that's what that's what they call it. I don't know. <laughs> I mean, uh, it, takes, just, it takes a lot of yeah, getting used I mean, to. It's, it takes a lot of memory. I have to remind myself either pick the camera up or just realize that Tiffany is filming so I could, you know, I don't know. I guess talk or <laughs> you know interact with the camera or whatever a little bit better or whatever because normally it's not really on my mind vlogging I'm, I'm trying to make it be more involved with it but yeah sometimes it just i don't know i yeah. just don't be paying attention to it sometimes i mean i'm not even i'm 
I'll pick up the camera more often, but I mean, we're not really daily vloggers, so we may post the vlog once a week if we have a lot of downtime, maybe twice that week. So um, since we pick it up a lot less frequently than other vloggers do, um, it's hard to get used to it. So we really haven't, I mean, I haven't fully got used to it. I mean, you're talking to a camera, you're hoping that, you know, you can connect with someone. So that's why when you all comment um, and, you know, socialize with us, it makes it make more sense to me <laughs> you know it makes me know that even though at the time being I'm talking to a camera it's connected with someone so I love when you all comment and stuff like that yeah. um, and y'all need to tell your friends and your family and them to subscribe <laughs> <laughs> I thought it wasn't about subscribers look <laughs> um, <laughs> let me see okay so Ashley Brown ask do you plan on doing any diy decorations for the holidays and if so what and please share um i don't know i'm still toying around with the idea i saw some cute things on pinterest that i kind of want to try i definitely want to do some um some um activities with bryce for the holidays so um maybe i'll consider actually filming them i didn't i didn't make a um, note to film it but you know maybe i'll actually film those because he's going to be out of school and the last question is, what what are your favorite foods to eat at Thanksgiving? Um, for me, I like this question. It's very timely because Thanksgiving is Thursday. Mm -hmm. So I love collard greens. Oh, my goodness. I could eat collard greens almost every day if I could. Um, I love deviled eggs and I like ham. Those are probably my three favorite things for Thanksgiving. Oh, how could I forget? Sweet potato pie. Not patties. Not patties. <laughs> yeah, so <laughs> so ham, collard greens, deviled eggs, and sweet potato pie are my absolute favorites. Me? Yeah, Everything. man. I'm sort of West Indian, so I might have little things, little minor things like um, beef stew, oh, yes. uh, this drink called sorrel that my mom makes all, every holiday. It's a West Indian drink. I like, love that drink. Um, maybe we should try to learn how to make that one day. I will. Yeah. I, I love the, the West Indian beef stew. So when we first got together, I had his mom teach me how to make it. So I make it now. And it's great. So I'm, I'm going to learn how to make sorrel too. Yeah. But obviously, you know, the basics. Mac and cheese. Ham. Turkey. I'm not big on turkey. Um, devil eggs. Um, so I'm trying to copy me. Collard greens. Uh... I love uh, stovetop stuffing. I know that's probably not homemade stuffing, wow. but I love stovetop stuffing. Gotta have stovetop stuffing. I'm not a big stuffing person. Um, gravy. You just gonna name everything, huh? Yeah, man. Biscuits. I'm not big on cranberry sauce either. I don't like cranberry sauce. I don't yeah. even know the purpose of it. What's the it's purpose? The, it's know. to dress the turkey. That's what most that's people what use it for. for. Well, people use cranberry, for, cranberry sauce for the, I mean, some people, people eat it by itself too. I ain't got time. No. Wasting my plate. Wasting my time. Anyways, but um, that those are all the questions. So um, if you didn't get a chance to get your question in, we'll, we may do another one. I don't know. Some months from now. I don't mm -hmm. know. Um, but um, thank you for everyone who submitted questions. I hope that you enjoy watching the video. Our answers were a lot more long-winded than we thought they would be after we just got to the flow of answering stuff. We just... Yeah. kept talking it, come, it was not there it wasn't really an easy answer to some of those in the <laughs> yeah, beginning yeah. so you know so sorry um, if you sat is. through to the end appreciate you yep. like please like this video if you sat through the whole thing let us know down below mm -hmm. um and yeah i hope everyone has a great thanksgiving with your family and your friends and your loved ones all right mm -hmm. talk to you guys later peace